Have you ever taken drugs? Piers Morgan tried this, I don't know how many times with me, and I said, look... Would you ever be prepared to push the nuclear button? Are you going to miss going to head to head with Dominic Raw? Um, probably not, no. <laughs> probably not. I'm looking forward to my new venture. I mean, I'm just saying, <coughs> Manchester City. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you to me are everything, the sweetest song that I could sing, oh baby. That's mine. Uh, we'll do a double act. <laughs> it sounds like Mr and Mrs already. Um, I'm going to start with Reese from Cardiff, uh, who says, if there was uh, just one Tory policy you could abol abolish right now, and it could never be brought back, what would it be? Oh, just one. <laughs> Just what, if you had to pick one. Room 101 style. If I had to pick one, oh, it would have to be something around the stuff to do with young people. Because I think young people in particular, they've taken quite a lot away from them, so... Um, it's hard to pick just one, because there's so many of them. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'd add to the list there. Um, refusal to have a windfall, a proper windfall tax that would reduce people. Yeah. So if, it, if it's something that's urgent now, it would drive down the cost of living. It would be um, the ridiculous loopholes that they've put in um, when it comes to the windfall tax, which mean that um, people aren't getting the help they need with their energy bills and they're incentivising fossil fuels rather than renewables for the future. Uh, will your government find a way to remove the need for food banks? Yes, I hope so. I hope so. Absolutely. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, I, I talk about growing up in a very difficult circumstances. I was a free school meals kid and I had my son when I was a teenage mum. I didn't have to go to a food bank yeah. to feed and clothe and be able to get nappies for my child. I visited a food bank and saw the, the baby food, etc. And I just felt the indignity that people are suffering. And these are in work as well, people that are suffering. I think there shouldn't be... Uh, a situation where we're one of the you know best economies in the world and yet we've got people who are in work having to go to food banks so the frustration for me is a lot of conservatives don't get that they don't understand the humiliation and how people feel when they have to go and ask for help in those circumstances nobody in work in the UK should have to go to those circumstances where they can't afford to feed their family I mean, at the heart of this is something really important, which is Labour's values, about security and people um, having the security and the peace of mind of knowing that they can make ends meet, they can provide for their family, um, that they will be treated properly at work and have the security when they're at work. Prosperity, the chance to get on um, and to uh, thrive, you know, both at home and in a job that they want, um, and, and the basic respect that is so lacking under this government uh, that every person, every family, every community wants. So um, whether it's the way people are treated at work, whether it's the food banks, whether it's struggling to pay the bills, the common theme running through these questions are those Labour values. And they're the values that we will have in our mind when we make decisions in government. Gun and knife crime, um, we will tackle it head on. Um, and uh, as with the last Labour government, we tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. And that's why I've been clear that the next Labour government will be mission driven, purpose driven, and one of those missions will be to drive down serious crime. In order to do that, we need to tackle some of what is going on under this government. And when it comes to dangerous dogs, again, too easy um, to go online. Um, and you know, access dangerous drugs. The, the, the legislation's all right, but the you know, control by the government isn't strong enough. Um, do you stand by Labour, the, uh, the previous Labour leadership's pledge to provide women uh, hit by the state pension age rise with a compensation payment of up to thirty-one thousand pounds? We think. I mean, firstly, um, we've met many of these um, women and campaigners, and. Um, our hearts go out to them. They've been put in an awful position, a position they shouldn't have been put in. Um, it's a huge injustice. 
in terms of understanding um, their uh, basic injustice, yeah, we completely understand that. We'll have to wait and see what the court case says um, uh, and whatever is appropriate um, as a result of the judgment whenever there is one. Many of these women unfortunately now are seeing that that justice hasn't been served to them and this government really does need to address that issue. Obviously if we're lucky enough to win the next general election we'd have to look at in the round what the books say but we're about a fairer society, we're about not compounding injustices, it's about how we can help people and recognise what, what's happened and, and see what we can do but you know the government have had years They've had years of this situation and they've failed to act and they've let these women down. This question is directed to Keir, but I'm sure Angela may have some input too. <laughs> Matt Ford recently interviewed Jess Phillips live on stage and during the interview they ended up discussing your infamous quiff. <laughs> she was debating whether to text you there and then to see if it was created with hair products or whether it's full of natural quiffness. I can't possibly disclose my routine. <laughs> There are not some things where it, you know, which are just not to be discussed. <laughs> um, and uh, I shall text Jess now as a result of this and Matt. Yeah. So you'll and tell find Jess out... what, the, what the routine is, but you won't tell the readers of the Sunday Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not allowed to discuss nor touch the quip, so. Oh, right. <laughs> noted, noted. Yeah. Um, another question from Andy, who I think conspicuously doesn't say where he's from. Uh, and I think this is to both of you. Have you ever taken drugs? <laughs> yeah, paracetamol all the time. <laughs> I, th I, was, I, I, Piers Morgan tried this. I don't know how many times with me, and I said, "Look, you know, I had a good time when I was younger." Good answer. Um, uh, this one's from James, who also doesn't say where he's from. And to both of you, what is your go-to karaoke number? Oh, you to me are everything, the sweetest song that I can sing, oh baby. That's mine. Oh, I have to go for Sweet Caroline because that is what's played. <laughs> I shouldn't previously say this today when Arsenal win. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, mean, I mean, I'm just saying <coughs> Manchester City. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a, uh, another quick question from Edward, presumably not that one. Uh, who's your favourite member of the royal family? Oh, oh. I mean, for me. It's got to be one of the little cute princesses. Do you have a favourite? I don't have a favourite, but look, I mean, they do a really difficult job very, very well, and we've got the coronation coming up in a week. Look, we're very clear that we want to uh, deport and remove anybody who shouldn't be here. Um, and that's exactly what we did when we were in power. It's exactly what we'll do um, if we come into power, uh, privileged enough to come into power the next election. So, um, you know, if you take um, those arriving by small boats, we want to stop that happening. Nobody should be making that journey across the channel. But in order to make that happen, you've got to have a policy that is actually going to stack up and is going to work. And that means tackling the criminal gangs who are driving uh, this awful trade but also dealing with the applications here and all we've got from the government is gimmicks that won't work rather than action that will work and um, one of the sh most shocking statistics is that of all those people who arrived by small boats in the last 12 months or so only one percent of their applications have been processed so um, for the home secretary uh, and the prime minister um, when they're talking about uh, asylum they need to look in the mirror and explain to the country why they've broken the asylum system uh, you often accuse Rishi Sunak of being out of touch with ordinary people. Uh, to prove your down-to-earth credentials, how much does your weekly shop cost and where do you get it from? Oh, mine's a nightmare. Because I've got teenage boys. So my, and, and I share it, I share the wealth of, of the, the cost of it, but I'm also a busy mum, so I will do takeaways as well. But my weekly shop, shop is, you know, north of 200 quid. Because I've got two, like anyone who's got teenage boys know, they eat like, they, they're like termites. <laughs> they eat you out of house and home. Like literally I buy a pack of four Mars bars from the pound shop and my kids think that's one snack. Not that they <laughs> last them throughout the day. So uh, to be fair, I do try and and get the bargains and the deals but my kids eat a lot of food so yeah my weekly shop is really high. Kia do you have a favourite supermarket? We, I mean normally Sainsbury's but we do go to other places um, not usually 
a whole week at a time because we've got young kids as well and they eat too much. So we're constantly going back. You think you've got the weekly shop and you've got to go back and get more. <laughs> yeah, because um, you've got downstairs. So it is Sainsbury's, it, it is Sainsbury's <laughs> but we go to other places as well. But uh, that's, that's the first place. Uh, Martin from Bracknell asks, uh, are you committed to abolishing the House of Lords and will this be in the Labour Party manifesto for the next election? Yes, we are. I don't think anybody um, can really defend the House of Lords um, and that's why we've set out plans to abolish it um, and have a different second chamber that I think will work much better. So yes, we want to abolish. Um, yes, the proposal on the table is capable of being implemented in the first five years. Obviously, as we get towards the election, we're going to have to look at the priorities, but um, it's a firm yes on, on abolishing the House of Lords. Um, would you ever be prepared to push the nuclear button? That is not a question that um, any aspiring Prime Minister would answer. Yes, uh, has to be the answer because the deterrent doesn't work if you're not prepared to use it. Um, but in answer to the question, in what circumstances, that's not, that's not a question that um, anybody who aspires to be Prime Minister should answer. But the deterrent has to be effective, and to be effective, it has to be, um, you know, you have to have a Prime Minister who is prepared to use it. And I think the number one point in my mind is our responsibility is to keep us safe and keep our country safe. And therefore, that is a heavy responsibility, but one that you have to be prepared to take. And that means making decisions that sometimes are very difficult decisions, but at the end of the day, is keeping our country safe is a number one priority. Okay, Marianne from Hyde um, says, uh, when Labour win the election, when Labour win the election, uh, will they demand that those companies and people who profited from useless and undelivered PPE supplies pay back any money they were paying? We would go after those that haven't fulfilled the contracts. There's a huge amount, billions of pounds were wasted on contracts that shouldn't have been given and or were not delivered upon. And the government has just written it off. We're not in the business of writing off taxpayers' money like that. Um, that money could be used for our public services. That money could be used for our health service. So we'll, we'll come down really hard um, on anybody who wastes taxpayers' money. Uh, Debbie says, Labour, this is more of a, a, an instruction than a question. Uh, Labour, you need to be more full force and get the Tories to answer for the mess we're in. And I'm James... trying. <laughs> <laughs> and James follows up with, why are you so dependent on notes in Prime Minister's questions? Furious eye contact should be the order of the day. Didn't they teach you that in school? Oh, James, I've, I've never been taught furious eye contact in school. Um, but maybe we'll try it next time. Okay. And I've never been told I've held back, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's a new one on me. <laughs> Working people will be pushed into poverty by his Prime Minister before he says enough is enough. Yeah. She talks about working people. She talks about working people. Are you going to miss going to head-to-head -head with Dominic Rob? Um Probably not, no. <laughs> Probably not. I'm looking forward to my new venture. Presumably <laughs> <laughs> it'll be all the doubt. Yes, yeah. the battle of the gingers. <laughs> um, I'll let your readers decide which ginger <laughs> side they're on. Uh, Isaac uh, has a question for Kia, which is, you made 10 pledges during your 2020 leadership election campaign. You've since gone back on or adapted, as you would say, uh, a number of them, uh, including uh, public ownership of utilities and the abolition, uh, abolition of university tuition fees. Uh, why should the British public trust Labour's manifesto for the next general election? Those um, pledges are really important um, and uh, they remain really important. Um, some of them have to be adapted to the current circumstances. I think that's common sense. And I think there'd be far more criticism if um, we disregarded um, COVID in Ukraine and the huge damage that the government has done to our economy. And when we set out our five missions for government, um, fastest sustained, highest sustained growth in the G7, rushing towards renewables, um, safe streets, opportunities for every child, um, and you know, set those out and an NHS fit for, the purpo for purpose, people are really excited by those missions and that's what we intend to deliver in government. Uh, Victor from St Leonard's on Sea uh, asks, would you ever consider rejoining the EU? I voted to leave 
Well, Jana asks, uh, could you please explain how exactly you're going to make Brexit work? The EU will not let you cherry pick. Uh, firstly, there's no case for rejoining the EU, but we do need a, a better deal. Um, we were, um, the public was sold um, the deal on the basis that it was up and ready, um, and it, worked, it transpires it's half-baked. Um, so we've got to get a better deal. Um, and that's what we mean by make Brexit work. Closer trading relationship with the EU, talk to any business that exports to the EU and they'll tell you how tough it is. A much closer security set of arrangements with the EU, much closer collaboration when it comes to scientific and um, cultural work that we can do together. So there's lots of things we can do to improve um, the deal, uh, but there's no case for going back into the EU. And I think that reset of you know, the Conservatives have done great harm in the way in which they approached the negotiations. And actually what we need to do is we need to have that. Anyone who's done business knows that relationships are really important when you're trying to forge through some of these uh, contracts, some of the agreements that we have. And we need to focus on them. There's been too much bombastic, you know, headline grabbing, you know, um, sort of, you know, feather waving in, uh, in these negotiations. Actually, we need grown-up conversations that are, you know, beneficial to the EU, but equally and very importantly beneficial to the UK. And that, that cooperation and that respect is needed, but we need that, that relationship where we're able to have those conversations. It's a way in which we frame those negotiations and the way in which we go into those discussions really does set the tone on how you come out of those negotiations and how you're able to move forward. And I think that the Conservatives have done great damage in, in those negotiations over the last couple of years.